Hello, this is Steve from Beto's Leatherworks, and today's projects are we've got some Gucci shoes that we are going to resole. Now, these two pairs, the brown and the black, I started already. Um, I wasn't uh, going to put in a video, but I figured, you know what, might as well be a Gucci day today. So, but the main one that we're going to be focusing on and during, during the video is this pair right here. Now these have seen some better days, let me tell you. Look at that. Peekaboo. Anyway, so we're going to start taking this apart and um, resoling them. On this pair here, particularly, we're going to be paying attention a little bit on the uppers work, like dyes and clean and adding color um, conditioners. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll make them look much better than what they are now. All right, let's get started. Alrighty, these are called reverse pliers. So when you squeeze them, they open up instead of closing. So basically, I remove these horse bits here. I just kind of open that up very gently. The reason I remove these is that because. When I'm trying to work on the uppers, you can't really get to this area right here where it's stained. The metal rubbing against the leather will definitely stain that area. And you can try to get underneath it when you're trying to polish it, but you're not going to be very successful as much as this way, at least. I he wore the heck out of these shoes, man. I mean, the uppers are in really bad shape. So, we're going to focus on the uppers today, too. <clears throat> now, you got to be careful now. Some shoes, these are really weak metals, right? And when you try to open these rings up, you're gonna break it. Gucci's not not bad. I've never had an issue with Gucci breaking. Some of the lower quality ones, like Kohans and that kind of uh, shoe, you're gonna have that. You're gonna have that issue. So you need to be careful when you remove those. I try not to remove those in the lower lower quality shoes. Just the fact that you know you're gonna have an issue. And. Um, Anytime, any that noise again. Anytime that you're repairing or restoring something, you don't want to create more work than you actually have to do. So I try to stay away from those issues. All right. We're going to start with the heel base and. We're going to move forward on. All right, let's continue. Now, most of the, I shouldn't say most of them because I'm not sure what dictates which shoe styles are how they're, you know, constructed. This particular one is blind stitch. So blind stitch meaning that, you know, we open that up stitch it and close that back over the stitch obviously that's the same way as this one is but this one is not this one is just glued on this is just a glued construction <clears throat> those are called blake stitched blake stitched are basically stitched from inside of the shoe to the outside the goodyear welts are stitched from the outside of the shoe okay this is this is neither or nor is that right neither nor Neither or. This is basically just glued on. This is a glued on construction. <clears throat> Normally I leave the, the way that the shoe is made, I leave it the same way. Like for example, if it's, you know, blind stitch, Blake stitched, cemented. But this particular pair, I think I'm going to do, I'm going to do a blind stitch like the other one. 
but once the sole is removed I've got to get to the I've got to get to the footbed because that's the problem footbed's got a hole in it that is the problem can't leave that the same way as it is obviously Those are the small nails that are inside right there. You see those little nails? They need to come out. So you hammer them from there and it pops out and you pull them out. They're supposed to. Sometimes they bend. Okay, let's see what we're going to do now. The trick is going to be is putting this thing back together. Once you take it apart and make it feel like it wasn't taken apart. Well, it's going to feel different because what happens is that when the footbed changes it's going to alter the feel of the fit okay and not not in a really bad way well it shouldn't anyway we're going to try not to change that feel for him but the difference he's going to feel is that it's going to be a new footbed and he simply got he simply he simply has to basically just break the shoes in again I mean this isn't this is really this usually doesn't happen like this on a on a pair of fairly new shoes they're not that old you can see the impression of the foot right obviously that's the ball of the foot that's your that's the big toe or that's the big toe there and the other toes there now I'm guessing this guy sweats a lot, right? Because this sucker usually doesn't get like that. That dry and crackly like that. Wow. Anyway, so we're going to replace that piece. Now this is, a, this is our pattern. we got to keep this. So I'm going to make sure that <clears throat> we cut it exactly the same way as when we took it apart. So the actual fit doesn't change. The, the, what, what's going to change is basically there's not going to be a footprint anymore. So he's going to have to kind of wear that and then the, the footprint will kind of form and break in. That's the break in period of the shoe. So while we got it in this shape here, there's your shank right there, by the way, which is in good shape. That's the other part of the footbed we're going to keep. So while we got in this shape here, we're going to go ahead and try to work on the uppers and um, see if we can bring these back a little bit. All right, let's continue. All right, so... What we're going to do now, we're going to replace this piece right here. What happens is that if, when the heel is a little loose on you, your heel goes up and down and starts wearing that piece down, and pretty soon you're going to have it being torn like that. Now the way it's done is that once this piece is peeled up like this, it gets stitched here. Let's see if I explain it like you. It's like this is called like a French winding almost. It gets stitched like this, and then it flips over, just like that. And this is what you see basically. But in order to to remove that, you've got to remove all this stuff too. So here's one. Here's the other one done. So basically I had to remove that in order to get to the end of that leather piece. So now this is all finished. Now this is dark brown as you can see, right? But we'll tint that a little bit better to match the uppers. Now we get to put all this stuff back. This needs to be all hand stitched back on the sides right here. And then we can move towards working on the upper some more as far as color and, and adding some moisturizers to it. All right, let's continue.
Just like that. I suppose I could have put a piece back here only, but I don't know. Looks better this way. See how the leather is kind of starting to match already? I made it kind of faded a little bit. Footbed's in here. Still not done. Footbed is ready. This is a piece of leather. Okay. So the other one we've got this back leather piece replaced. We've got the front part restitched and the footbed is it's all glued but it's got to be kind of hammered back together. Now if you look here, you see that black fabric? That's a nylon piece that goes all the way around. And that is what gives it that shape in the back so it doesn't stretch out of shape. It's there for structural support. Most shoes have that. She is done. All right, let's continue. Be nice if the thread was in the needle. Sometimes I cut it too short, and when I start again, it just pulls it back out. Oh, I'll try one again. <clears throat> Can't succeed the first time. Basically this gets flipped over like this and it gets stitched all the way around again. Alright, let's continue.
how we stitch that. in there slowly but surely all right let's continue so now basically we're just going to restitch that vamp area back to the shoe it's just, just a curved needle with nylon thread. So this is what it'll look like after it gets done. Just like it was before. I mean if you didn't tell anybody that was taken apart, you wouldn't know it. That's the whole idea about repairing and restoring items. You try to match as best as possible to the original what it used to look like. You're going to tweak it sometimes, but not change it drastically unless otherwise it's known ahead of time and agreed to the customer that, hey, you know what, that's not going to look like it anymore. So make sure that you get that agreement beforehand and everything is okay. But whenever I, whenever I look an item, I usually know what I need to do. And... Um, there's no issues. There are no issues. Alright, so I won't bore you guys here for for 30 minutes just stitching this on. But you get the idea. Alright. Let's continue. Alrighty, so we have the stitching done okay now we get to clean the surface with some acetone now you can use um, turpentine you can use some turpentine if you like or um, maybe some rubbing alcohol to make it a lot less um, a lot less aggressive but basically this is in pretty bad shape so I chose acetone on this one so we can just kind of get it down to the nitty-gritty now we're on the toe area right there we're gonna sand that and dye it you heard me now when this when this vamp was off I did clean underneath on their side of that and I put some conditioners on there because it's going to be difficult to get in there completely like I explained last time. And that's about it right there. We'll let that dry for a little bit. While that's drying we're going to take some sandpaper. Now, I have anywhere from 120 to about 600. This started out as a 120 it's probably at probably over 220 now over 220 now around the edges here are still coarse it's the worn out area right here see that circular pattern there that's worn out when it when it starts wearing out it starts tearing basically so it's got to be replaced this is this is from the num cake the num cake is a round circular disc that we sand the the bottoms most of the time so we're going to take that worn out side and we're going to lightly sand it. Now you don't want any coarse sandpaper, obviously, for obvious reasons. Is you're going to do more damage than, than help. Now we've got a couple of areas here that are kind of torn. We're going to put a little bit of glue just to flatten that surface out. I won't sand that area, let that cure a little bit. A little bit here is peeling up. Right there. I'm going to put a little bit of glue there also. Probably 
press that down real good, smooth it out as best as you can. Overall, I mean, it may look a little rough, but um, I think with a little bit of color, it'll come back pretty good. It'll come back very good, actually. <coughs> Once we got that smoothed out, then we'll just kind of gradually work our way. This is 1500, this is 600 here, this is 600, and then once we gradually, gradually going to go to higher number sandpaper, 1500 I guess is the highest I have, that'll give it a nice smooth surface. Now you just have to keep at this, because it's not going to be one, one pass of sanding and and making it smooth. So we've got some Phoebing's dark brown dye. We're going to dye that area. Now I'm using a dauber here for the toe only. The rest of it I'm going to airbrush it on there. Which is the same thing. Same, um, same dye. Now you got to be careful, right? I had my finger on the acetone and my finger was wet. If I lit it up, my finger would have caught on fire. So you just got to be careful. I mean, this is, you're still dealing with chemicals. We'll let that sit for a bit, come back, buff it, and that'll show us some of the more imperfections that we, you know, the areas that might need more sanding, and we'll continue to sand them. All right, let's continue. All right, all right, all right. You all know what time it is. It's that magical time. Yes, sir. Hammer time. <laughs> all right, we'll wet the sole a little bit. All right. Just have to make sure that everything is center. And right on cue. Looking good. Push that forward just a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ring is in the center. That's good enough. is looking good look at that the uppers are coming along just fine I put the number 12 on there too because as, 
That's his. That's his foot size number twelve. You see it? Cool. All right, let's continue. Now this is a round, <clears throat> round trimmer blade. Most of the blades are flat like that, so the edges of the soles are flat also. But now we're going to do the edges of our Gucci pair is going to be round. It's going to be round like that. So we're going to use this trimmer right there. Okay. All right. Let's continue. Now we can stop here at this stage, just finish the edges and put the heel on and finish the rest of the shoe. This would be a glued on construction like it was originally. But I'll take that one step further to make it structural support by putting a blind stitch on. This is basically called a blind stitch. We cut that open and we stitch it and then we, we cover it, we hide it. dense leather tough to cut I'm kind of surprised this isn't this isn't stitched down. Well, it is now. Well, it will be, I should say. This is going to be Blake stitched, okay? I'll show you guys in a minute. Blake stitch meaning that it's going to be stitched from the inside of the shoe to the outside. Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, we're going to open up a little channel right here so the stitches can kind of countersink so when the leather comes down, there's no hump there. All right, let's continue.
basically the shoe goes right on this is called a horn the shoe goes right on the horn and the white thread will be on the inside and the blue thread will be on the outside what you call a Blake stitch. One of the white stitches. Basically it secures everything tight to the sole to the footbed and then once this gets covered up it'll be a long time before the stitches are exposed. All right let's continue. Alright, so once the stitching is done, we're going to apply a little bit of glue. I use a Masters All Purpose Cement on most of my jobs. Give it maybe a couple of minutes to kind of dry, and we can hammer it down. He's coming along. All right, let's continue. All right, so we are at this level now. We've got, we opened the channel, we stitched it, we glued it down. Now we're gonna do light sanding around, well, we already did the light sanding. You guys can see the edges are nice and round. Okay, there's no welt on this one, so you're gonna have a, a th you know, thin profile. Now, I get asked this question a lot about bottom staining, right? I mean, I just do whatever comes to mind. I, I'm, I don't have a set formula that I go by, right? So I use Phoebe's dye. This is red. Dip it in there just a little bit and then take the excess off. Let's see if you can back this up a little bit because I'm going to spin the camera around to go to the buffer. So this is just basically just kind of giving it streaks. You guys can see that, right? Now we're going to take the dark brown, same way, small streaks, dab that into the napkin to get the access off so it's not too much. This just gives it like little dark shadows. Okay. Again, there's no rhyme or reason, right? Now, what we get to use a spray, spray dye. I know you're far from there, but... We're going to use the black and just kind of basically just 
do the edges to feather it in, like, you know? And the shank area, we're going to darken it up. Now, it doesn't seem like much, but it'll, it'll get darker. Now, you got to be careful not to spray the uppers. If you hold the shoe at an angle, you won't get it on the uppers. Now, there's, there's a little bit of a little bit of shadows on the edges in the shank area, right? And we come over here. This is basically, um, you can use any color you want. This is a shoe cream. We're going to use red. Again, any color you, you can do, you want to do, you can do. I know some people say it's a waste of time to do the bottoms. They're only going to walk on it one time and it's gone. Who cares? I don't really care. Now we get to come to the buffer. Put a little bit more cream on there. buff it. Now you want it more shinier, you can add a little bit of wax, continue to buff it until it gets nice and shiny. That's it on the buffer. Now that's going to get a lot shinier once you put a little wax and conditioners on it, but you get the idea. All right, let's continue. All right, we are last leg of our journey. So what we're going to do now these buckles, horse bits, whatever you want to call them. We're going to take a triple zero steel wool and just clean them up. I mean, they they do corrode over time. Not corrode, but. Let's just say get, they get dirty. And this really kind of brings the shine back. You can pick these up at your hardware store. Triple zero steel wool. They make they, they make finer ones, I guess quadruple zero, four zeros, I don't know. Just a little bit of wiping these down gives it a nice shine. <coughs> All right, we're going to put these rings back on. And we're going to squeeze them with some pliers, which have some leather pieces on them so it doesn't scratch up the metal. Now once this gets done, I'm going to coat the last last coat of conditioners on it because this went through, I don't know, maybe three, three coats of conditioner. So, because it got dyed and, and cleaned and dyed and cleaned and dyed, sanded. So a lot of moisture came out of the leather you got to replenish those back. Not too bad. Just got to give it a nice moisturizing and maybe a little bit of wax to shine. Alright, let's continue.
All right, welcome back. We are done with another project. You guys remember the toes on these, right? Big difference. So basically, you guys saw me do the full sole heel, blind stitched, dovetail heels, and somewhat of a die job on the bottom. It was rather quick, but you get you know you get the gist of it. It's not it's not that difficult. It's it's pretty it's pretty easy to do. Um, the uppers were in pretty bad shape. I think the uppers were worse to me than the bottoms were, even though the footbed had holes in it. This was the original footbed that got removed too, the other shoe. Now it had a three-quarter length sock liner. I replaced it with a full, full leather sock liner. That's a new piece that goes all the way to the toes. Now this was a glued on construction, okay, it wasn't stitched. So now being stitched it's going to make it more structurally better than what it was now would it have held if it was just a glue job probably would have but over time of the shoe flexing at this point it always tends to come loose okay now with the stitched soles it's not going to come loose that easily i think it'll be much more durable than what it was now i think this gentleman is was basically wearing it barefoot that's why I think the leather deteriorated a bit because sweat has salt in it. And over time you wear it like that, it's just going to get wet, you know, dry, wet, dry, wet, dry, and then just going to make the leather dry rot and fall apart. Now, this hole is not from the sweat, okay? It's just over wearing it. I guess that was his favorite shoes. But you can't wear the shoes like this. It's not good for your feet and um, it's, just not, it's just not good for the shoe. And they're good, beautiful, quality leather shoes. If you maintain them, you take care of them, they'll last you a lot longer than if you don't, obviously. So, and um, I think, uh, what else? I think that's it. I think overall, they turned out very nice. These are the round edges I was telling you guys about. The trimmer blades, basically, there's different shapes and different styles. This particular one is round. This doesn't have a welt on it, okay? It's Blake stitched, like we talked about. Um, the back piece got replaced there. We call that the top line. It's almost like a, um, it's almost like a French binding is what it's called. It's stitched and rolled over and stitched again. Um, I think if you didn't tell anybody that was replaced, they wouldn't know it was it was done. Now this job was four ninety five, almost five hundred dollars. Okay. Um, now when you when you think about it, that's a lot of work for that. Um, for this type of a shoe and um, and the price is basically the amount of time and the difficulty in the job that I do that's how I price things now you're gonna get people saying oh you should have bought a new pair of shoes you know that doesn't even come to consideration when we're when we're doing jobs like this most of the restorations I do or repairs whatever you want to call it they are sentimental value items to the customer and buying new ones doesn't come into play yeah, he could have probably bought one for sale for cheaper than, than what he's going to spend to get it done. But that's not the point. The point is that we bring them back to their former glory, if not better than their former glory, and they can still keep it wear for many seasons to come. And if something is not worth repairing or spending the time and money, then I'll be the first one to tell the customer, hey, you know what? It's not a good idea. And I've done that plenty of times, plenty of times. Last week, I did it about three times. So sometimes you got to kind of take control of the situation saying that, you know, if you're going to put the money into it and I'm going to put the time into it, I want it to last for many seasons to come so you can enjoy it. If it doesn't, then don't waste your money. Put it towards another pair or another bag or whatever the situation is. Okay. Well, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. And um, share, comment, give me thumbs up. Um, what else? Subscribe. Okay, we gladly, glad you, if I can talk, it's, it's, long, it's been a long day. I'm, gl I'm glad, see, I can't talk anymore. I appreciate it that you guys do all that. And I love the comments. Good, bad, ugly, I'll take it all. It doesn't matter. All right, we'll see you guys again on the next project. Take care.